call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended? Or are we good to no. approve as written? No, nope, I'm good. Move to approve as, as written. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And first up, uh, we do have an appointment there. Um, Chuck Davis is on the Zoom portion of it in regards to his interest in the health officer position. Can you hear us, Chuck? We can't hear you. Oh, perfect. Oh, and we can hear you fine. Oh, great. Great. I take it you made it safely to Boston. I did. <laughs> so Chuck had sent a letter in here um, expressing his interest in applying for the position of town health officer. Um, obviously his letter says, as you know, I'm a retired physician with more than 30 years experience in health care um, in a variety of settings. He's familiarized himself with the town health officer manual, um, did not run away screaming and is still interested after looking at the manual. <laughs> hey, at least you got to look at the manual before you. <laughs> Some of us got thrown right into it. Oh, really? Are, are you the current town health officer? Chris? I am, yes. Oh, yep. you are? Oh, okay, my condolences. Yeah, I, I, had, um, I had done some under the deputy um, portions of it uh, a year ago. Um, in some of Neil's absences, and then, um, and then when Neil getting done, it it defers back to the chair of the select board uh, until it's filled. So currently, in its role, it's myself, and then um, and then Paul has been deputized as the as the um, the other. So I think what we're looking for, um, obviously, is to have um, a citizen fulfill the needs of the town health officer position um, in a full time basis. Um, and uh, and I don't want to talk for Paul, but I think at this point Paul would continue to be the deputy, help out. Um, I know I will graciously step down because I have other <laughs> stuff that's going on. Um, but um, you know, it's uh, I don't know how much information you have on it, Chuck. But you know, I in the capacity that I've served in uh, here a month, year and a month there type deal. You know, it's it's uh, obviously it's probably one of our more. Uh, important uh, appointed positions in the town. Um, there's often um, uh, lots of um, uh, issues that happen that uh, that have to go or run through the health um, officer at, at some point. Anything from you know someone eats something bad at the at the store to um, you know most recent we've had some bite you know either animal bite um, type things. Um, uh, some parts of it can be COVID related as we've had uh, most recently. And then the most common is usually um, a tenant owner um, complaint in regards to living conditions or um, type thing. So um, so those are anywhere from, I, I don't know, what is it? I've been doing it the last month maybe? Maybe, yeah, I think so. And Paul just so. became effective May 1st and he just got a, I put something in his packet today for um, so, so somebody faxed us an animal bite form. So I put that, gave that yep. to Paul today. I'm taking the oath yet. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, okay. Because you had Chris. So it kind of right? comes in spurts, Chuck. It's, um, you know, in the last month, it's kind of what I would say is, you know, kind of below average where, you know, I probably have only spent maybe, I don't know, four hours in the last month doing anything. And that was just a, a animal bite. Well, one animal bite and then one potential tenant owner um, type issue. Um, usually the winter time uh, becomes a little busier because you deal with like um, heating issues and things like that, that, that need some attention um, really quickly. But um, I guess one thing that we are um, curious, at, you know, Chuck, if you do end up doing it is documenting the time. Um, and that's why we most recently changed it to an hourly instead of a stipend position, just um, just because we'd like to know a little bit more time or a little more information of what goes into the health officer's time. Um, you know, is this a make it up? Is it a, 
four hour a week position or is it a 10 hour a week position or is it, you know, so we're just kind of curious on that. Um, we also wanted paperwork to start coming to the town office. Um, some of the forms actually say to go to the town clerk and they hadn't in the past. So I think Pam, we were gonna create just a file drawer so things wouldn't have to be stored at anybody's private residence. They could just drop them off and we could file them and then have a better, like Chris. Yeah, and then have better history of understanding exactly how many hours it takes to do the job. Okay, yeah, that would not be difficult to add. Um, it, it's not difficult to, to maintain, maintain a time log. I can do that. And, and not that it you know, prevents you from moving in a year from now or something that comes up life-wise, um, but you know, usually it's a three-year commitment. Um, so when, once you... Um, submit your paperwork into the state, it's usually cycles on a three-year cycle, so just. Right, just that, to let that you was know contained in the manual, right? Yep. And the appointment, if appointed, it would begin June 1st. They only do them at the first of the month, as we recently found out. Sounds good. Uh, I have read the, the manual now three times. Uh, I, it's pretty comprehensive, and it also has links uh, to Title 18 which is much more comprehensive than even the manual is. So I'm comfortable with all of the information and I feel that I'm capable of carrying out the duties of the town health officer. Sure. Yeah, the manual does a really good job um, uh, outlining uh, different possible instances. Um, the, the state themselves, um, there's a couple of contacts to the state directly that if you ever have any questions when you're going through the process, they're really helpful. Um, so it's not like you're on your own little island. There's usually others that can help you. I would just uh, have to clarify how it, what the working relationship would be between Paul and myself to make sure that we're coordinating and not overlapping. So we we'll probably have to sit down and have a meeting about that, about coordination. Yeah, we could, uh, that's, that's not an issue. I'm sure we could get together. Um, you're the, you know, you'd be the lead beagle and I'm the helper, you know, to assist. My background is more construction and um, contractor type stuff, so, and my medical knowledge is only what I've gained over the past 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, really yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably, but uh, yeah, we could get together at some point in time, okay. we'll work all out the logistics. I agree. That's fine. And so if you each would be required to submit a time card to get paid, um, so I think that you set the rate at $25 an hour last week. So if you were if you want to be paid for the position, um, you just need to submit a time card. Other than that, if you chose not to do that, that's your choice, of course. And um, we would just ask that you like track those hours again, just so we could add them with your hours and Paul's. So at the end of the year, we'd have an idea of what we were looking at, make sure the budget was, you know, we had a proper budget and that sort of thing. So it sounds like, so even if we move forward with a motion for Chuck, that we would still, for the month of May, that that I would still be the yes. health officer mm -hmm. um, in charge, okay. Yep. Nine days late, Chuck. I'm all I'm this within Yeah. So I don't does anybody on the board have any questions at this time? I I just have one additional question. Do you want me to fill out the health, town health officer recommendation form for you guys, or is someone going I to do that? I have it right here. Um, so when you come to the office, if they appoint you to take your oath, I would have you fill in some of it. But since Chris needs to sign it, I will have him do that tonight and then leave it out front with Kelly so you could take your oath and complete the rest of the form and then we would get it to um, the health department. Okay, and uh, that oath, oath cannot commence until the first of the month, right? I can't, I have to wait till the first of the month for the oath? Yes. Or, okay, so I'll come in on June 1st and and do that. Yep, yeah. and then you'd get, yeah, and then in the mail, yeah. you'll get your certificate and some other information. But that's gotta go in now. Well, this will, yeah, we'll put this yeah. in as soon as, yeah, when you come back to Bethel, if you swing in the office, this just requires your 
but we could actually, your full name, email address, actually we could fill this in. Um, and then the select board has to bring in a brief statement notice noting them why they believe that you'd be good at being a health officer. Chris has to sign it and then so we can get that done. I'll leave your oath with Kelly. And it usually, usually takes about 10 days and you'll see something in the mail from the state. Um, and then your number goes out on their website. So then, so that would be the only thing is what phone number you want. Some people only want their home. Some people don't want their cell phone number. I, have no, I haven't had a landline for years and years. I just have my cell phone. That would be fine. Okay. All right. So we'll make note of that just because I just want you to be aware. Once you put the information out, it goes out. Right. Yes. And you don't have to put out your email address if you don't want to. You could just do your cell phone. Do you have a preference and what's out there? I can I can do both. I, I maintain my business uh, email, which is Charles S. Davis MD at Gmail. I can use that as the town okay. health officer email. Say, say that again slowly. What email did you it's, want? It's my name, Charles S. Davis MD. Charles S. Davis MD. Yep. At gmail.com. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we just like to make sure because once it goes out on that website, as Chris Jarvis knows, it takes an act of Congress to get it off. No, it's more than that. <laughs> It'll never come off. <laughs> so, all right, perfect. So somebody would need to make a motion. I make a motion that we appoint Chuck Davis to the position of a town health officer. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Have a Thank safe you again trip for your home. service. Yes, thank you. Bye. Is that to be in blue ink? I don't know. Listen, guys. Been, so last week you were doing seconds. Now you're not doing seconds. Throwing you so, off. Yes. Do the Julio. Got to get you trained before she comes back. Oh, Lindley's not here, so. Yeah, that's true. No, yeah. that's right. I mean, we'll blame Lindley because she's not yeah. here. All right. All right. So we'll open it up to public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda this evening that you'd like to comment on, now would be the time. Nothing? You don't have anything for us, Ellie? Oh, great. Perfect. Yay. Gotcha. Okay, anything out there? Jesse's the only one on Zoom. No public comment for me. Okay. All right, we will close public comment then. And we'll move forward um, to first item of the night. We have uh, first class <coughs> liquor license for Cockadoodle Pizza Cafe. So obviously they're, um, I explained the situation. They had, Jeff had left his liquor license. I, with Pam, I had not realized that he had done so when I, he came in and I spoke with him in March or April and I did not realize he'd left his liquor license with her. So, um, cause we had a discussion about um, status of some of their accounts. So anyways, in here, as you can see in the manager's report, they have a, payment plan and they really said that the lack of liquor sales is affecting their business so obviously they want their liquor license approved um, because what happens is since it was as of May 1st they have to you know cover all the taps and can know liquor can be mm -hmm. um, yeah I did give them the opportunity to send an email or to attend via zoom or in person if they had any else you know anything else they wanted to add and um, but I didn't receive any information from them so I know we had talked about, I don't know, maybe it was six months ago there when I had thrown the question out there in regards to, you know, what powers do we have at, at the yep. time of liquor licenses to talk about accounts and things like that. And, and, um, and we found out that we actually do have some power at the time to yep. make sure accounts are up to speed and things like that. And, you know, I think this is the first example that we've had since that discussion of mm -hmm of a liquor license um, coming before us with some um, with some rearage code. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I guess, you know, I think my feelings are is this is a good example 
one for us to use where, um, I mean, I would like to see us approve the liquor license, but I also would like to see it contingent upon or, or, or the business owner understanding that, you know, next year at this time, if, if, you know, if this isn't caught up, then this may be a different discussion that we're having. Yeah. Um, you know, I, this is one of only, you know, a few tools that we have to get accounts up to, to speed. And, you know, I really thought hard about this this weekend, you know, because some of the comments made was, you know, we had COVID and, you know, business is slow and this and that. And, and now that I'm on the school board, you know, I've been talking about, you know, how can we bridge some of what the school's doing with the town? You know, how can we make the ball fields busier so that, you know, when the ball fields are busy, then people are going to buy gas, buy food, you know, downtown. So this Sunday, there's, there's a huge soccer match going on where there's hundreds of kids down at the soccer field. And, and I had to get gas at Champlain Farms. I went in to get a drink. And, you know, there's literally two families and they're like, you know, is there anything to eat? You know, they didn't have their grill going. Cockadoodles is closed. And I'm like, you know, here are the opportunities that are, they are missing in the downtown where they could have fed 100 kids, you know? Yeah. You know I mean, kids like pizza, right? I mean, it kind of goes together. <laughs> um, and it's just an opportunity, you know, the sandwich shop was closed, Cockadoodles was closed, and I'm like, these are opportunities that are being lost, you yeah. know? Tozier's so. open. And I don't know if staffing shortage is an issue for their hours. That I don't know. I didn't have a conversation. I'm just saying. I didn't, no, I know. I'm just saying. When I somebody ask that raises the question that it's <laughs> business yeah. is slow, but they're not taking full advantage of the opportunities that they're getting, True. I, I kind of have an issue with that. Yeah. Um, when it comes to we owe money, we need a liquor license. Yeah. You know, type deal. Yeah. Yeah. And they did agree um, to a payment plan and that they would be. And hopefully she would, you know, obviously pay it off sooner. We went through the balances owed and exactly what they were and, and, um, and taxes and that, you know, their May payment was also coming up and, you know, so we so, did talk about it. So I have, I have a question. I ordered a beer that last Friday and I got an earful instead, but yeah, fine. <laughs> which yeah. is fine. Um, but they own several properties evidently. They do. And. Does our ruling just impact the business or does it impact all of their accounts? Only the one that the liquor license okay. is Okay, I mean, that was, a, that was a question that came up in our conversation and I did wanna, mm -hmm. I thought that was fair. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, they, I had spoken with Jeff when he came in and Marjorie Brun gave him exactly what was owed. Um, water and sewer explained process that the select board is the local liquor control and that they do not have to approve the liquor license if there's a balance due. Explain that. I didn't realize at the time he'd left his license. I thought he okay. just came in and so I explained it to him and um, I had assumed you know maybe someone would make a payment and do something and then he came in when I was out looking for his liquor license and then Pam approached me about it when I returned and I, I didn't realize she'd had it. It was an oversight on my part, I guess, and her miscommunication. So then I spoke to Jen staff. She called and I said, you know, it'd be on the agenda for Monday night. <clears throat> Explain the situation, apologize. And, and we talked about the amounts. And I said, you know, when Jeff left in March, he knew exactly how much was owed. And, and they had not made a payment since February. So I'm like, you know, I had assumed when he left that we would be receiving Check and I said, you know, I can go to the select board, but you really need to agree to a payment plan if you have any hope of them possibly approving your liquor license. I said they're not anti-business, um, right? But this is a tool they yeah, have. Yeah, we. Yeah. So, anyways, so um, that's what we said, and yes, and they actually agreed to a payment plan and and hope to um, you know get it paid off quicker. And you know, by all means, I mean, I, I'm a thousand percent business no, I know, related, but so, it's. But you gotta, you know, take advantage of your opportunities, and mm -hmm. and in this case, I mean, we have to understand that, you know, if you are not current on whatever it is, if it's taxes or water and sewer, it affects everybody. It doesn't yeah, no, just affect true. you; it affects yeah. everybody. Yeah, everybody true. pays into this pie. So, um, I'm fine with making a motion to move yeah. forward with the approval of the of the um, class one liquor license. I just hope that there's a discussion that is had with the owners about the expectancy that this would be cleaned up by next year at this time so that hopefully we don't have, you know, 
um, the same conversation, but. Okay. I'm just texting Lindley to make sure she's all right. All right. So I'd make a motion that we approve the uh, first class liquor license for Cockadoodle Pizza. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Just one signature. Page? Yep. Paul? Yes, Dave. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cover that camera for a minute. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jess, was... Jesse is saying, I'm bugging them weekly to be open later and Sundays. Yeah, so I had a really good... Nice, Jesse. You know, maybe this is for something down the road, but I've had a good discussion at the school board level of, like, you know, obviously the school owns the ball fields, right? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe someday, maybe that changes or something, but, you know, how do we... The ball fields aren't as busy nowadays because the high school isn't there. Right. Yep. Um, so, you know, how can we keep those ball fields busy? Because those ball fields being busy, like let's say tournaments and having different um, sports come in to do training camps and stuff, draws business, right? And, you know, gas, sandwiches, pizzas, and you know, everything else. So uh, that's gonna be one thing that I wanna work on with the schools. How do we make this attractable? And then on our end would be, <laughs> getting the business owners to want to take advantage of this. And, and it just kind of really irked me when I drove through something. I was like, you know, ladies sitting there with their kids wanted to get, you know, sandwiches, you know, and then you drive by and there's like, there was hundreds of people down there. Yeah, That's that, right. those ball fields are busy from yeah. two or three weeks ago all yeah. the way until the end of summer. Yeah. There, there's stuff down there every night um, if it's, July because they were. But the other thing too is on the flip side of it is we are, they don't charge much to allow them to play down there. Um, but what will happen at some point is if they come in to spend the day and they can't get food and stuff, then they might seek elsewhere, right? You know, where's the place that they can have those amenities too. So, um, but just like, yeah, but our rest, but the, the eateries that we do have have to be able to get staff or yeah. they or they have to right. pick another day during the week when they're when well, they're I mean, I, yeah, and again, I'm, I'm just I'm just downtown can do what they want to do. But I, you would just it, it, the last year in the downtown, if you want to get something to eat on a Sunday, Monday or sometimes Tuesday, there is nothing open for almost three days down here. You'd think maybe there would be some coordination where, all right, the sandwich shop's gonna be open, but the pizza place is closed, or, you know, like, instead it's like, they're just closed and, you know. I, I, don't, dis it was, I don't disagree. It was Sunday, it was Mother's Day, it was soccer stuff. I mean, there was just so much opportunity, and I was like, you know, nothing's even open, so. I remember the old days when Jim, when they owned it, mm -hmm. I mean, that thing was open on the weekends. It was hopping, you know, it was, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you know? Yeah. Football time, you wanna have pizza with your football and you can't mm -hmm. get pizza, you know, it's like, come on. So, all right, I'm not gonna poo poo on them anymore, but, <laughs> but it just irks me when we yeah. had this, I drive through and dude, I'm not kidding you, there was like 200 plus people down at the field. I mean, mm -hmm. there was just so much opportunity to, to do it's stuff. too bad. So. Yeah. Yeah, down at the fields. And I know when my cousin was here from Maryland, we wanted to go to Cockadoodle on a Tuesday and it was closed. So, and, and, and like I said, the snowmobile thing was one. And one I know just day. going through AAU with my kids and stuff, like we go to these tournaments in the small towns and like, like there was like one sandwich shop open and there would be like 50 kids in line to get a sandwich. Like, you know, that sandwich shop just made more sandwiches in one day than they did probably the whole week prior to that. <laughs> so there's good opportunity and just would like to see it continue, you know? Yep. So, uh, and then we have, next is um, <clears throat> uh, request to increase cemetery plot prices by the cemetery commissioner. Well, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the cemetery prices include four cornerstones and perpetual care. 
Um, he, uh, Cecil's asking that the rate increase be effective immediately, and he said the price for cornerstones is increase, increased, obviously, along with the cost of perpetual care. So these are the current prices, and then that's his requested increase. When was the last time that any price increasing or... Years. Or I mean, this so is one of those things that's yeah. been kind of dated. Oh, yeah. I can't yeah. remember we've ever had one. Yeah. Does, does that go into a perpetual care and fund endowment type thing? or They have the cemetery um, money is all separate. I mean, the town pays for mowing cemeteries out of the general fund budget, but their money, um, the cemetery has their own, you know, check it account where all their money goes into for all the, um, you know, plots that they sell and, and maintenance that he does. And it's, so. and it's hooked in somewhat with the trustee of public funds, funds too, yeah. mm -hmm. because some of the endowment, some of the will stuff is, is part of the cemetery upkeep too, yeah. like Calgary, for example. Yeah. You know, some of that money goes toward the yeah. care of his family's uh, Did plot. I guess the one thing that wasn't in here and I was, is um, how, how do the current prices or the requested prices um, line look up towards neighboring towns or you know, yeah what's the I was trying to figure I'm out where the where the baseline was you know I, uh, I think I mean cemeteries are different <coughs> in every town um, some towns, the town runs the cemeteries right. and takes care of the cemeteries. Some places, in, like here in Bethel, there's a cemetery commissioner mm -hmm. that oversees all the cemeteries. I think each town is different. I'm not sure how much continuity there is. So he made the request. He's never, I didn't, I hadn't heard of a one in five years. And I'm not, even, before that, no. I asked him, I was like, when would he, he's like, I have no idea. The seven years I've been on the board, mm -hmm. I've never one yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, so he just said that what triggered it for him was the increase in price in the cornerstones. So I said, this is what you want? He said, yes, I said, all right. Well, a lot of cemeteries, you don't get the cornerstones. Yeah. You basically get them. You know, you can put a headstone. Some cemeteries are restricted even to small, just small mm. markers. Hmm. You know, so. I mean, or, I got to think, knowing Cecil, that he's probably done his homework. I would assume um, so. Yeah. He made and he wouldn't question. ask for an increase if it wasn't absolutely needed. I was needed. surprised it was so small, frankly, once he told I think the cornerstones alone are like $140 or more now. So yeah. I was surprised. Well, I just started thinking of this just like when we were looking through... Um, you other know, fees honestly never you know permitting fees that yeah. were like 25 dollars mm -hmm. that everybody else was yeah. like 150 you know and it was yeah. like there was such a gap yeah uh, I have and i wondered if idea. this was like the same deal is is the average plot uh, a single plot a thousand dollars and yeah. we only charge in 350 you well, know like we can certainly have kelly call yeah. around so that if he wants to do another rate increase in a yeah. few you know in a year or so he can I, he came with a request i uh -huh. said yeah. I'll we, ask we, we could approve this, but we could ask him to yeah, I'll have Kelly. see how it see how it would compare with yeah, others kind around. Of nice and, well, maybe it's like you were saying. Yeah. Maybe it's um, another one to examine here. Yeah, I'll um, ask her to call like Randolph Field, Royalton. Does anybody have any questions in regards to the request or no comments no. or move? We approve. We approve. Okay, motion Second. to approve. All in favor? <laughs> Forget it. All's thrown <laughs> off. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, Cecil, thanks. And update on Pinello Bridge Design. Oh, this is so funny. So I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. I just, I didn't give you, I gave you the pages that I thought were pertinent to your, mm -hmm. you wanna do. Well, obviously the bigger thing is page nine. So we're, um, and the page nine and the final page where I gave you the, the integral bridge design. So um, obviously it's, you know, one, million it's a million dollars um and remember we're on the we are we will be on the hook for 12.5 percent so we were meeting last week and then and chris bump has been very helpful That's what i know about building bridges you could write on the head of a pin so we've gone through this and um to still kind of find the cheaper price here and um so we're going to be doing the integral bridge design at first we thought about um coming in with something that was already precast and just kind of put in place, and that was obviously gonna be very expensive. We went back and forth about guardrail systems and what was required of us as far as guardrails. 
versus the current um, you know, roads and standards that we signed because you know, if you're building a state highway bridge, then the guardrail system has to be able to stand you know, bigger trucks and things like that. So I was concerned that if we didn't build to a specific standard that, and then you know, something happened that we'd be liable, so we talked about it as far as our you know, standards of what we had for bridge design. And so we did not end up going with the extra you know, bridge rail because obviously the main thing that goes over there is a truck to plow and you know, fuel truck getting up to the Pinellas home. We also stayed with the original, went back to the original design, original location so that we could, um, we don't have to create this big you know, hump to get from Gilead onto you know, the bridge. So the way that this thing will be designed is if there's a flood, it will take out everything around it, but this bridge will be standing um, the way that it's and in the river I'm currently. writing this down. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, this is what they're saying. You feel free. This is what they're <laughs> so, promising me. And in the river now, there's currently a pad, concrete pad, like a scour pad, and that will be taken out. What if we pick alternative number one? Which is do nothing. Right. Um, then you're. We, is that is that? Are we going to suffer penalties? Are we you know, well, obliged well, to do this because of the eat, money that was used? We'll eat whatever we have into it. So we will get nothing from FINA. We will pay BHB. We will all the design fees we've got so far. We will pay for all that. We'll pay for out of pocket the original to remove the original bridge and put this in. But we're renting that bridge from the state, and they right. want it back. So do we have to give it? I mean, there used to be a time. Of, I mean, years there is ago, two you, years. You could only have that Bailey Bridge only yeah. so long. We, well, we've we've gone past that because of COVID and some other stuff. They've allowed us to go over that time frame. We've asked for an extension, and we'll need another extension, um, which they'll hopefully grant because we're already in the design process. We'll bid this winter, and this will go in next spring or summer so we don't really have a lot of options because that's not our you know bailey bridge or maybe mm -hmm. bridge so yeah. um you know 12 and a half percent of this is what um we'll end up doing and remember so you know we had a big meeting Five thousand dollars huh that's 125 it is so we'll have and have to 130. Which, which, and I will say, I don't, we wouldn't have engineered and purchased a Bailey Bridge for that price. It would be more than that. Yeah. And um, the other thing, too, is let us not forget that the Pinellos came with a whole parcel of residents from Gilead who wanted this replaced and upgraded. And I'm not sure how long we have to maintain it. If, if it may be five years or so, you may be able to. <clears throat> up the road or something but i know we've <laughs> are you kidding i this has been a process and a half i know we've been going at this thing for been, years i know we have ripping our hair out so anyways i just wanted to give you the update of where we were <coughs> and um how do these prices how do they reflect the current market and she just gave us this I just, i'm assuming that these are have been done over the course of months and she she just did this i just this report is well, I know, I just but had she, this that figure might have been there last no, fall. No, no, it wasn't. No? It was not. No, nope. because I mean, a lot has happened in the construction industry yeah. in the last just thirty days. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, she she just she had updated her numbers recently, but obviously by the time we go to construction next fall or next spring, I don't know what it will be exactly. But um, this is her estimate, you know, right now. Well, I know that, and I'm just they're hoping. If, yeah, exactly. And if we're this hoping number to here do, reflects um, today. And we're also hoping that they'll, you know, they're also looking at another design option to possibly um, reduce our costs a little bit. So, but it, it's hard. They're well, think, all right in the ball, same ballpark. I think our discussions that we've had over the last one or two years mm -hmm. and a half now um, has been that we were thinking we would be on the hook for about 125000 or something like yeah. that, roughly. Yeah. Um, so I guess the, the two questions I had written down was one, well, is this price reflective of today's current thing? And then the second was kind of what Paul was saying, which was, you know, how much do we have into it now? And what does do nothing mean? So, yeah, do nothing you know, is not an option. I mean, we can't, we don't own the Tem maybe bridge that's there. The state will not sell it to us. I have asked repeatedly if they will sell it to us and they will not. Um, so could we just squat on it? 
<laughs> well, mm. he's also told huh? me that, that they won't be able to kick you off it. He oh. told me that especially it, especially dur- between uh, November and April, yeah. we're not gonna be able to do anything with it. Right. Mm. He told me <laughs> that it has been um, that it's also slated for. Um, I know it's not going back out again either. So this isn't like one of those bridges that it was new and we might have stand a better chance on. So. Well, I think so we also do nothing is not an option. I think one one discussion that we have talked about prior that we'll have to have is is what do we do going forward once there's a new bridge in place? Mm-hmm. So does it make sense to the town? And I think there's been other cases similar to it where we have a million dollar bridge to mm-hmm. one or two parcels of land. Yeah. You know, does is that? I think that what the select board is needs, that sustainable for our yeah. town. I think what the select board needs to look at is, you know, some of these roads that, you know, we really need to talk about throwing some stuff up that that's really are more private drives to one home or two homes than that we're maintaining. So that's definitely something that we had talked about doing and, and um, I'll just make a note to, that we can work on that. But anyways, I just wanted to give you an update. There'll be more, you know, obviously numbers a little bit harder you know, numbers down the road. We did myself, Chris Bump, Kelly from VHB, and the engineer, his name escapes me right now. So when would this go out to bid? Oh, this winter. This winter? Mm Mm-hmm. So anyway, so we'll have more of you. I just wanted to let you know I hadn't talked to you about it in a long time. I, you know, I deal with it, but um, just wanted to give you an update. That's what we're looking at so far. And and um, I, you know, obviously we've talked about cutting, you know, trying to reduce the cost. So hence the rail system will be a savings now that we don't have to do that. So it's gone to FEMA, has received this information, and that was actually a larger packet that's gone to FEMA, and um, for Andrew to review. And certainly there's less humps, you know, hoops to jump through here and humps to get over since we're going to go back to the original location. So they don't have to raise from... No, the H&H study... Because of the way it'll be anchored, they'll be all right. Yep, and now that we're going to take the scour pad out that's in the river, that's going to be helpful too, so that'll buy us a little space there. So it'll be a little bit higher, but she said that she had worked with the the road engineer at BHB to make sure Mm -hmm. that when they know that the access to Pinello is... Okay, so you're not going like we're gonna put over some big hump to get to from Gilead. So it should be fine. That because that was one of the concerns originally was we were gonna have yeah, this, like coming, get a coming race down and jump. That, yeah. Well but coming down yeah. that creek is flowing right toward yeah. the abutment. Yep. It's not right. And then it turns there. Yeah. So we've talked about that and I've sent letters to the Pinellos and to Dr. Christine Pinello, she's the owner now, about you know. You really need to talk to someone about dealing with your issue up the river, the scour issue on their side of the property. And I'd sent photos and things and given her names of A&R places she could contact to see if there's money available to help her. But that wasn't something we would assist with. Well, I was going to say that, you know, if you look at upstream from there, know. That, That's what, yeah. you know, there's a lot of issues. But, there is. You know, one of the largest issues why the bridge did get washed out was because of the, the erosion of the bank on yeah, on that kind on the of owner's a, property. And it's so. just the way it changed the current. But then so. again, I mean, it's hard to police the river too, you know. Yeah, um, well, and that, you know, they've seen trees coming. I know that um, someone who lives on Gilead had also sent them emails and photos of some trees in the, that had come down saying, you know, you're really losing that bank. So, mm-hmm. and they're aware of it. I've sent letters and photos and emails too, so. Okay. So we'll see something again here in uh, early fall. Yeah, most likely. Or late summer. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Board of Listers request for pay increase for a board chair. Well, I was meeting with someone when this got put on my desk. Louise dropped it off on my desk, and then I didn't get a chance to follow up with Judy, um, who is the chair, as I was. Um, Jean, trying to get my packet out late on the day on Friday. I talked to Judy this morning and said, okay, look, I 
have printed out your budget. Obviously, her and Mo are working regular hours, which is great, and they're doing trainings. And um, I had talked to her about this, uh, Judy, and Judy said that she did not need this pay to be retroactive, that she had not requested that, and that if you wanted to make it effective, like July 1st, um, then, she, you know, she was fine with that herself or, you know, either starting it now or July 1st. She didn't want um, you to feel any need to make this retroactive. And I Judy is the I chair of the I Western. hadn't heard that there was a difference with the pay. I had never chair. heard the first that. I've, first I've heard of Me it. too. And yeah. I asked Judy about this. I said, where is that written down? I said, yeah. she makes sound like, well, somewhere in a manual in the Lister's office, but obviously they're elected officials, but it's nothing that's in our personnel policy, nothing yeah. that I had I said, I have five years, I've never heard anything about it. So, And that but was a question I had, and I, yeah. I think <laughs> I didn't know. last we had talked to the listers when we went through some pay, um, probably a little over a year ago, was yeah. more on their experience for the position. Yeah, this was her. Because we had <laughs> talked about, you know, why somebody was a 16 versus an 18, or, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, because of their experience. That's right, because. But I don't the, remember ever there being like a chair not I didn't even know they had a chair. Not alone. Oh, yeah, they, was there yeah, a they always have a chair. Difference but for that. Because mm -hmm. the last one we did was in 1121, and that was when Judy received the increase, and then remember also Mimi, because she'd kind of had them as graded Lister 1, Lister 2. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was the last increase. But today I got to speak with Judy, and, and, and Judy's like, you know, hold the phone. And, and the good news is they're making regular, they have regular office hours. It's so much easier for people to get you know, in touch with them, and so anyway, mm -hmm. so Judy. Um, but they're also at 111, 112%. Which, yeah, which yeah. she said, and they, they have savings elsewhere in their budget, mm -hmm. but yeah. um, that's part of, you know, new listers and training, and yeah. but it's, I, I think it's great that they have regular hours, because that that's has just been a, good to see two, yes. two people in there that can yeah. answer questions. And, uh, yes, and very committed, so. Yeah. Well, um, I, I would like clarified if the, if the difference is because of experience or whatever, or is it because the chairperson gets paid more? They were clear, Louise was clear, and I asked Judy about it today. Um, apparently there's uh, something that written down in the Lister's office, and that the reason that they feel that the chair should make more money is because they chair all the grievances. So, and not, so like, we if have, it's, not like we have hundreds so of grievances. When, so when did, Louise stopped being chair. Um, Louise stopped being chair. I'm trying to remember when you got the notice. Uh, a few months ago, because. Um, well, I voted Judy in well, July 1st last year. Well, That's right. Chair. And then they gave Judy a raise because she felt at, on. Um, on. Sorry, tongue tied. Uh, January 1st, 2021, Judy got a raise. And at that point, she was not yet the chair of the listers. So at some point in the last July 2021. She became she oh became oh sorry. Chair. I said, oh I'm sorry, Paul. Um okay, sorry. So she was chair July 1st. Thank you, Paul. I misread that. So um but anyways, that, apparently that's the thinking because the listers they all participate in grievances. Um, but the thinking behind it is that because the chair of the Lister board, you know, they have to go through grievances, and um, that was their thought. I'm not sure, because they all go through grievances. Yeah. However, it's apparently just been a policy of our Listers since maybe since Louise has been a Lister, and she's been a Lister a long time. But again, it's not a policy I've seen or heard mm, of. And we might want to get some clarification. And here. Judy was, and Judy did say it existed. It was, you know, in there. But again, they're elected officials just like you guys. Yeah. So, long story short, Judy is saying now, July 1st, you know, she's certainly fine with that. She says it's nothing <clears throat> she's asking for to be retroactive. The reason I'm asking is because the pay is for the position, not for the person. Right. Um, so I'm still not clear when she, if her current salary is 18, mm -hmm. she's been receiving that since July last year. No, she, 
No, she received a, just a raise on January, January 1st, 1st, 2021. Okay. She received so a raise, that be, and at that time, Louise was still chair. And that raise was based upon her, her level of her experience. Training. Yes, right. right, exactly. So when Judy became chair, she did not get an increase. And they, Mo and Judy chose not to at that point. So, you know, they're both, you know. But the increase in January of 2021 was, I would say, sizable. It was, and remember at the same time, it right. was also Mimi got a raise to. We're talking about $18 an hour for someone who prop, their job is probably as important, if not much more important than the health officer that we just agreed to pay $25 an hour. Mm -hmm. It's true, you're right. I mean, I mean the they're grand... talking about the grand list. They're talking about how we do our taxes, how we get paid in this town. And we're talking about a $7 an hour less, mm -hmm. and we're quibbling over that? Mm -hmm. quibbling I think over. we're just clarifying. Okay, but, well, I, I'm hearing it back and forth. But, but yes. I've been back and forth five times, it's quibbling, <laughs> in, in my opinion. There well, you go. Well, I will say <laughs> that uh, you're, you're absolutely 100% correct. The entire state runs off the grand list. That's how school tax is set. That's how everything. So it's, it's a very important very, job. It is a very I, important job. I, and I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to figure out. I want to make sure we're paying for the position to be at whatever level we decide, rather than Judy or Mo or, or whoever, right. the person in it. it and if the the chair is uh, compensated more because the person's the chair, then I think that that needs to be reflected. That is reflected here, but if it's not an, I agree. It, well, I think, I think that maybe the motion, what the motion needs to be is not so much for Judy, but it would be to it would be to increase. I, I guess the, the thing that I have right now is it's a formality thing. So regardless of what we're paying the person, <laughs> do we actually have something in writing or voted on by the board somewhere that said that the chair gets an extra dollar? I don't know that. I don't know. So that. I'm thinking the motion should be that we approve that, you know, as of this day or whatever that, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, effective, you know, May, May 9th or 10th that you know, that the, the chair gets a, a dollar more an hour. And then if Judy's in that capacity or whoever's in that capacity, then yep. they automatically get it, right? Yeah, that's a good way to word it. Does that yeah. sound? And then, and then we know that we've gone back that if there was something written down somewhere or not voted on, then at least it's in stone, that, now, right? Yep. That's what okay? I'm getting at, yep. 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 Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that because well, the request does not say that they want to um, give Judy a raise. Right. They want to give the chair yep. a raise. Right. Exactly. And that's so the I mean they just they did say Judy became the chair. Yep. But right. the question is the chair receives an extra dollar per hour. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I I see no problem with the way it's worded. Okay. So someone wants to make a motion and pick an effective date to approve that as of blank. Well when when is your payroll running right now currently? I just did it today. So it would be effective. So today is the first day of your new. We payroll? already submitted it for pay. No, but I understand. I so today is your first day of your new. This is the first day. Of the yesterday was the start of a new payday, pay week. Okay, so then I would make the motion that effective the eighth, right? Yeah. May eighth. Yeah. Because we missed the pay. Yep. Okay. And then I would just think going forward that whoever is the chair, it's yep. just that's great. Automatic, and you know, doesn't have to come back before the board, correct? Right? Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So did you just make that motion? Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Move it on. <laughs> okay. All right. And again, you know the, you know we may have to re-examine some of the appointed and. Yeah. Not appointed positions once again with everything that's going on in the world. Um, make sure that we have things that are apples to apples. It brings up a question that I'll forget if I don't say it now. Has the uh, IRS uh, adjusted their mileage number yet? 
January. They they yeah. usually adjust it from January. Yeah, nothing. No, yeah. and it had gone. I mean, gas has gone down. up forty six percent. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, I just it paid. Yeah. Three seventy five, and I got seventy cents off. <laughs> Sometimes they will make it a an emergency yeah. or um, change. I remember one year, two thousand eight or whatever, when we had that big jump. They they yeah. made one like that went into effect like July first. So yeah. you may see something come down with a. Yeah. But not as of yet. No. But everything. I mean, just the last two months, everything has gone up. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, I, I hear Came every day on the news bit, that it's yeah. gone up 9% right inflation, but it's like, no way. There's no way it's 9%. Like, everything that you're buying right now is up way more than 9%. Like, are you kidding me? But, you know, I, I think you will see something. Yeah, Social Security, big bump. <laughs> All right, so we got the Lister stuff done. And American Rescue Plan. Yep, there's Ellie. <laughs> I can hear you fine. Yeah, you're good. Okay. So, because I missed I missed the April meetings that you had that, um, so I'm not not sure what the status is. Um, of we're still work. We're still mulling it over. We had to. Um, what we did most recently was um, the, the um, federal guidance who came out and said that we should take the $10 million standard deduction. So that's what we did. And we had to make a motion to do that. And we had to file our paperwork by the end of the month, of uh, end of um, April, which we did. And we are you know, still kind of taking input, making decisions about what to do with some of the money. Some people would like to see us spend a little bit on updating the town's website. Um, we have some plans to um, hopefully replace some the sewer pumps that are at the end of their useful life, uh, that'd probably be about $120,000. Also, there's a large generator that um, at the base of uh, Lower Church Street for the sewer that's also in the same position uh, that needs you know, to be done. Um, then it would be something that would you know, buy 30, 40 years and wouldn't affect the sewer water rates for downtown, so we wouldn't have to like, borrow money for that. Um, the other thing we're talking about is putting money, obviously it was not a great uh, month season, and, and to put some money into the roads um, because we've had, um, you know, we're just behind. And so that's something that would also benefit a lot of people and make it easier for people to, um, you know, have access to, you know, to, to town. So if we're doing some money to help the downtown at sort of water rates, then it would be nice to also do some roads. But we have a specific amount of time that we have until we have to um, obligate the money and then we have to have it spent within a couple of years. So, so are you going to have a committee to... to the slide board is the committee. Yep. The, so the, we've been at, just, keeping on every agenda. Um, mm -hmm. We did... Um, so we've been kind of keeping track of notes to see what people are you know, interested in seeing it going on. and Because it's the select boards they'll be the ones who have to decide in the end. We're applying for a large grant to replace the sidewalk from in front of John and Janice Giffords all the way to the school. Um, we just did find out that that ARPA money can be used for that. So if we're in the right time frame, um, we'll be able to use our match, offset it with ARPA money. Uh, with This is American Rescue <laughs> Plan money. So it's gonna depend on the time frame if we can, um, if not, then is, we will use the, the money for something the else. House. Excuse me? Is the Giffords the Yeah, place? yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. Could could it go to any recreation things like um, we have, we applied for the land water conservation grant and um, for, and we were awarded that, yes, we could um, get that grant for 25,000 and we're working to We've been doing fundraisings, and mm -hmm. to match that, could any of it go and help us with that match, so that we we would um, be able to do the twenty five thousand? If the select board chose that as a priority, it could because the money can be used to provide any governmental service that we already currently provide. So, if the select board felt that that was a need that was um, and they wanted to use a portion of the money for that instead of something else. Um, it's really, in the end, it's going to be a priority of, of urgency, right? Because, you know, 
we could use it for, it seems like a lot of money, but we all know that yeah, there's so right. much need. So, but we'll so certainly add your request. Oh, sure. Yeah. Would Absolutely. it, would it go to anything like the pool needs that, that? Again, it could, it, it just really, you know, depends. I know that's something we need to get a price on, of course. Yeah. And the other thing is too, is the good news is in the end, if the, depending on how the select board, you know, ends up spending the money, it still helps us, even if we put it, you know, sewer, water, roads, or website, or do some of these things with it, it still frees up other money that we no longer, now we don't have to spend on the roads, or we don't have to spend on another capital project, so. But I will definitely write down, um, so you're looking for a land water match. Yes. And what was that, how much did you need to come up with? Um, we're working on coming up with 25000 Okay, and then I'll also make a note of it. And again, you know, the real clincher is the time frame because yeah. you have to obligate the money by a specific date and you have to spend it by a specific date. So okay. um, I'm very happy to add, we're keeping a list. So. Okay, so if we had like um, any other um, ideas like um, a, um, um, a, a, a coordinated system for um, a database for um, uh, to link all the volunteers from all the uh, committees would that be something I mean I suppose in a way I mean it, 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 I guess maybe because it's a, you know it's to be used for any service for that the government currently provides. I guess I would have to do read a little bit more into the final rule before I would comment on that. Um, but obviously, I think that the select board is looking to gain major ground with this um, with this money, whether it's roads or um, you know mm -hmm. matching, you know maybe a larger grant or something like that. So, um, but I'll make a note about that too. Database, sorry. Database. I think Ellie, we had Linking. when we first. Um, um, well, received or knew about the money coming, it was, at that time, it was very strict yes, from was. what we were gathering at that point. It was very uh -huh. strict. It had to be used for X, Y, Z, which mm -hmm. was, you know, water, sewer. Um, so we... Or, or it, broadband, yeah. That's right, or broadband. <laughs> right. Um, so we had already in the pipeline some projects that, uh -huh. luckily, that... Um, that we had been working on, so we started thinking about that's where the, the money or the matches yeah. would go for that. And it's only been recently, recently being two months, that we have found out that now there's, uh, you know, yeah. you know, now yeah. we can kind of open that up to, you know, to include services that are already be currently rendered, but it's still kind of a really gray line. So uh -huh. we're still trying to interpret what that gray line yeah. is, right? And you, yeah, so you now I think what we've talked about at the select board is how can we best partner that money towards either grants that we are in line for, may have, or can pursue, but it has to be inside that timeline, mm -hmm. not just to, um, to design it, but to build it. So. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where I don't think we're rushing into any judgment on it, okay. other than, you know, there are some things that were going to be significant hits on either utility rates or taxes, um, you know, like pumps, generators, and yeah. things like that at a very pricey that have, um, yeah. are over, have been over yeah. their life expectancy. Um, that, that now is kind of a relief because now we wouldn't have to potentially increase those rates. Um, but now we, you know, we just went through a really bad mud season and now we're right. like, okay. you know, is there opportunities of roads? Is there some opportunities to partner with some so other how grants? Long are you going you to also pay? have to go through the federal procurement process as well. So even though they said we could uh -huh. take it in and it could be our uh -huh. money, we have uh -huh. to spend it like it's their money. So, right. and you can't use it for a match for every single grant. It, yeah, it was tricky. And originally, they only Sorry. wanted to give it to us for broadband and new sewer and new water infrastructure and we're like come on we need to save what we have and so it's been this uh -huh. ridiculous thing right. um and, and um so we have to have the money obligated i want to say it's december 2020 december so so you're I think you'll december be taking ideas until december no we'll make a plan before that but we'll certainly we're just keeping it on the agenda 
for and every meeting waiting. for the next couple of months. I'm actually for waiting right now meeting. because somebody is working on a okay. um, road construction plan for us for a seven year plan. And um, so I've been talking to the road foreman, our, our new road foreman that just started you know, a week <laughs> ago or two weeks okay. ago. And um, talking with uh, Ryan Slack who kind of helps me as is like an assistant road commissioner about making a bigger plan. We finally just got the price last week of the generator. And so just trying to lay out okay. what all the need is. And we do know, like I said, website was one of them. Um, mm -hmm. And roads and the sewer, you know, sewer pumps, sewer generator. Um, we had even looked at possibly whether or not the roof on the sewer building needed to be replaced. And so mm -hmm. we're just trying to look at things that Mm -hmm. would take a real hit on but I'm sort of adding all yours to the list so we leave it on every meeting so that people <laughs> okay. can come with ideas in case somebody missed a meeting it's we just leave it on okay and like last week or last meeting was Gary Kugler and someone else said put the money into the roads so um you know but like I said we just keep in a whole list of what we have so I'm gonna add yours to that. Oh, so. thank you, because you know we like to do recreations. So. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, is it tonight or tomorrow night? You're having the rec, go rec. There's a meeting. Dave Baldigetti came in. There was one tonight. It was yeah. Okay, he came <laughs> in because oh, he went away. Yeah. So I gave him a spreadseet to help him. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to go in there blind, and so I explained it all to him. So okay. So. Yeah. And I. And I had suggested that we include oh, sorry. the uh, shuffle for all that we think about if there will be matching funds needed to implement any of the Bethel for all stuff. Yeah, and we're just really not going to know. And we won't know that, but that's, yeah. that's a, right, a because, potential as well. Right, because I think the steering committee like, goes until at least December. And then Dubois and King, once they get through their plan and V-Trans accepts it, then my understanding is we'll have, because we've gone through the Better Connections process, we'll have a bunch of grants that, or not a bunch of, we will have the ability to apply for grants that we may not have been open to prior. Right. But the good news here is, just for argument, say we spent every money on roads. When the Better Connections comes available, we're going to have more money available to us in the Capital Road Fund. Part of that. Yes, that would that. not exactly. So it helps the whole picture in the end. So it's right now, a lot of time frame. so time frame wise, I'm um, just trying to build this back in my head here. So, I mean, we obviously have budget season that's going to be coming up in, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah late for September, October, November. Okay. So are, are you thinking that we would make these decisions September right around budget season? Yeah. Is it so Yeah, because okay. by then I'm hoping to have the capital road plan. I'll have I have two estimates so far. We have, you know, um, we have uh, we may by then have some understanding of the pool cost, um, which we don't right now. We have Ellie's amount, we can get, I want, we need to get a price on, you know, redesign stuff of the website. So by then we will have more data. So you'll be able to make a better educated choice. Okay. So we're kind of still, you know, taking input. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So I'm just saying in the meantime, Ellie, if, you know, just work with Teresa. Yeah, she, was she, if these are her things, which and, is great. You know, or, or yeah. any of those ideas yeah. and we can. Okay. And it'll stay on the agenda. I leave it as an agenda item so okay. it'll be on All right. every yeah. meeting yeah. through, you know, September, whatever, till okay. I make a decision. I'll leave it on okay. every two weeks. So if somebody, that way it's just very accessible for people and, and um, okay. <clears throat> to come or if they think about it. And people have been good. They've emailed Kelly or called and seen me and said, hey, what about this or that? So. Okay. You know, and budget season's coming, you know, yeah, sooner be, than we think, I'll be so, in those meetings. you know, wish list time and, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's kind of like it, yeah. filling out your Christmas yeah. list and well, seeing what you want to get or not get. And, the cost yeah. of the pool so. so that the rec committee can make an idea on, you know, yeah. like the appropriation request. So mm -hmm. right. that's something we need to, that's yeah. like herding cats, but right. we'll get there. So I'm trying to come up with that, that yeah. number to see. Um, like if we tore it out and gunited the whole thing, what would it cost? And yeah. you know to replace and then place all the piping. So we we'll have to get an estimate. And 
will probably cry a little when we see it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'm, up, I'm crying already. Yeah. I'm crying already. I know. It's, so we'll, it seems like it, for since 2010, that pool has needed this amount of money, this amount of money. I know. I know. And, and then still yeah. we need the adaptive, yeah. like, um, not, you know, access. And yeah. I know. Yeah. You're right, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every year. Well, I know. Come Wednesday, you're going to want to be in the pool because it's what? supposed to be. I said, come Wednesday, you're going to want to be in the pool because it's supposed to be um, like 80 degrees. Uh, so send me to the ocean. I heard it's going to be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's supposed to be in the 80s at the end of the week. So, yeah. All right. Light on the box, black flag. That's right. Yeah, just in time for the mosquitoes and everything else to come out. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on ARPA, too. I really appreciate that you're putting it on the agenda so many weeks. Um, I guess I really would request or ask, is there a way to open up the process even more, though? Because I think a lot of people have no idea that this is even happening as much as they can come in. Mm -hmm. um, in part, you know, conversations with Ellie and a couple of rec committee members who didn't realize this was even a thing. Well, we did send out, we put out an invitation. We I um, personally hung posters and flyers, and we put it on Front Porch Forum and Facebook and the town website. And we certainly can make that push one, you know, multiple yeah. times, you know, if people don't read the agenda and stuff, it's difficult. But we did, we made, um, you know, we did posters and, and everything to get the word out. So. No, I understand, but I think as long as the only opportunity is to show up at a select well, meeting. Well, it's not. I mean, we put, you know, our, they can call the office, they can email yeah. any of us, okay. they can email any select board member. I mean, we were just trying to get, you know, get the information out there and, um, so, you know, and we can, we will certainly continue to do that. I'll, I'll um, have Kelly design something more to keep putting out there. But, you know, we, yeah. we um, I think that's how we had said it before, is just letting people know to call, email, get a yeah. voicemail 24 seven, somebody can leave a message. But we'll yeah. have Kelly work on a better post, I guess. I think that's, wait, one thought that occurred to me just talking with Ellie is if we could even get word out to each of the town committees that you know, this is a question to consider. Are there things you're working on that might be worth putting on the table? And then I know a lot of towns are appointing committees and they're generating kind of a project options list and then running that by the community again to make sure people really get a chance to have input on which of these should bubble up to the top as priorities. Um, it sounds like there are, you know, a number of core projects that really might make sense, but I think it would mean a lot to be able to have that choice. Um, I did want to just share a few things that have come out, Dean. I'm so glad you brought up the Better Connections grant and Bethel for All, because we've been able to gather so much input from people over the last few months through survey, through forums, through walking around town and doing walk surveys, et cetera. And there are definitely a few things that are bubbling to the top, having just gone through all of those comments. Um, it is worth noting we don't have firm recommendations for the plan yet, but I think we should have a pretty good list by about September. Oh, so good. there may be a chance to at least know what's going to be in that plan. The whole plan has to be done by December. Um, but for now, I can just share a few of them that I think are bubbling up to get onto the table. And just note, these aren't personal recommendations for me. This is really just what we're hearing <laughs> from yeah, people. Sure. So. Um, Information is probably number one, that people are just realizing there's so much amazing stuff in Bethel and happening in Bethel, but they don't know about it. So I think town website would be really important to consider for that reason. Um, we did get VOREC funding to do a town-wide wayfinding system design, a system of signage. So the design part will happen, but there's no funding on the table to do the signage. So that might be something to consider. I think signage is one of the number one things, again, that we've been hearing from people. Would that's be right, because really it'll be designed through the... Right, right. but it will fund the design. It won't fund actually doing it. Okay. Um, it right. will, in fact, fund even accessible design, making sure that the de design we come up with will meet ADA specifications and really work for people. Okay. Um, so that's one category. I think just because we've been out on the streets doing so much of the walk survey findings lately, that one really bubbles up. And in all the different events and activities we've had, 
just being able to walk around town and bike around town more easily is really coming to the surface. Mm -hmm. So amazing that you're applying for the grant to do that sidewalk section. Yeah. Um, there are so many smaller things that have really bubbled up. That's what's been really eye-opening to me. How there aren't too many sections that need a massive grant and massive overhaul, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of sections that need little repairs. True. And those little repairs are, or the little problems, I should say, are a major barrier to somebody who's trying to get around in a wheelchair or with a mobility challenge. So I don't have any idea what it would cost to fix any of those or to think about it systemically. Yeah. Um, and to go even simpler, what's really emerging is just the need for more regular maintenance of yes. sidewalks. It's just sweeping off the sand that accumulates and causes a tripping hazard or making sure that you know the sidewalks get cleared sooner after a major snowfall so that people can get through. Um, designating an actual accessing, accessible parking space. So, you know, looking at capacity, I don't know if there's a solution there in the ARPA funding or something to consider around town budget time. There's um, already something in the works for town budget yeah. time. And there is handicap accessible parking downtown, obviously. I had emailed you, we don't have the paint or the stencil for the ground, but the signage is up, so there is not on Main Street. I think um, the only one is here. Is right? the only one is here? There's. I thought there was one by. Um, oh shoot! I thought it was by. Uh, gosh, across from the street from the store. But no, I guess I thought. No, no, was no they're they not. It. They're oh, not. Oh, it, it's um, only up here. All right, I can find it. Well, you know, we'll find out because D and K or John Kaplan yeah. will give us the yeah. information. Yeah. But um, so yeah, need for regular regular maintenance that yeah. we know and. and and of course, too, with um, you know, sidewalk clearing, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we actually do have a plan to address that. In the That's great. Budget. But yeah, so thank um, you. And then I guess the other category I just throw out is a capacity one again, but thinking a little bit more toward economic development and community development. So we had uh, Trip Muldrow, an economic development consultant in town in the fall and doing a market study, those results are really just out, or were part of the presentation, so you'll be seeing the full study soon. But one of the biggest findings and takeaways, even anecdotally, was just we need someone available who people can call if they want to start a business downtown or need some help or something like that. You know, when we were organizing the events in the fall, I got several emails from people saying, I can't be there, but I'm really interested in opening a business or doing this, and I don't have that answer for them. You know what would be um, great is to do that on the, certainly on the website to encourage yeah. people to call either, um, you know, Green Mountain Economic Development, tours, and, and the Secretary of State has an amazing website on all these resources for people to start a business. And I know that Small Business Administration used to have retired business right. uh, folks that would come in and meet with people. So yeah. I do think that would tie into the website is having some really good, you know, hey, if you want to start a business in Bethel and then link into the revolving loan fund money and, and yeah. then all this, you know, mm -hmm. stuff available for people to start a business. It could. I think what they're actually looking for in this case is local information that we don't have, though. And I know your staff is so stretched, yeah. Teresa, in the office. You don't have time for it. Um, you know, even looking ahead at how much grant funding is available in the next few years, I think, because of recovery, there's this huge opportunity to take advantage of it as a town, to have committees applying for more grants, to be helping businesses grow, but it takes capacity. It really would take a person to be able yeah. to help coordinate some of that. Yeah. So, and the, and the um, problem is too, is it's, yeah, as if you could share somebody that maybe did some economic development for another yeah. town. I don't know what Two Rivers offers. Do you call for economic development? They have a, a staff member yeah. who deals with all that. That's a good point, because I, I was talking to somebody the other day, we've got five new businesses in town yeah. in the past few months. Mm -hmm. yep. And wouldn't it be nice if somebody would go, you know, we could have an article in the Herald, mm -hmm. uh, Therese could be shaking hands, right. and Chris yeah. could be handing right. them an operator's <laughs> manual, right. and do a little PR, and I talked yeah, to... Yeah, new in the neighborhood. Yeah, I talked to Kirk White about it to see if that's something that BRI might get involved in, and he said they're more, they're not, that was more a BBA yeah. Yeah, um, right. function when, yeah. when the BBA was... Yep. It's gone, but then, but it's not going now. So maybe you need to fire up the BBA again. 
It could, um, yeah. Because, it, I mean, a couple of the companies, any, it doesn't matter, anybody who opens a shop in town ought to get a thank you, how do you do, his picture yeah. on the paper. Right. Absolutely. Um, no, I think that's true. We did talk about that a while ago, doing, some people didn't want to restart the BBA, they wanted to do something different, and yeah. I had talked about just even an economic development committee, and, um, but we're having such a hard time staffing, I can't oh, even yeah. get anybody on the planning it's commission, tough. we have... We're trying to staff committees now, and we're having a tough time with our existing, yep. you know, committees. But yeah, that's one of the things we had talked about, and it, and it would be nice to mm -hmm. um, have, you know, more information yeah. to contact out there. And, and it's difficult, too, because, you know, what's your priority if, you know, if I had to prioritize, you know, more staffing and human resource? I mean, I have things that would prioritize over that just because mm -hmm. of, of the need, because we're, you know, small and you're figure it out, but I added it to the list nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, from me personally, what I would hope is that we think not just about need, but about potential impact and opportunity. Sure. Where could we leverage this funding to attract more that could then support right. some and of the other needs? Part of it is, too, is some of the basics, and we also know we're obviously still waiting to see how the state is going to get yeah. um, the bipartisan infrastructure bill and to yeah. see how that money is going to trickle down, but obviously better infrastructure allows better business. Too. So if we you know sidewalks and mm -hmm. roads and you know the ability to deal with stuff as far as sewer and water helps also you know it's the unglamorous side of making sure that businesses that come here can stay here. Um, so but you know so I think we're we all kind of want the same thing. <laughs> we just gotta figure out how to get there. Yeah. So anyway, so I have all your notes, so we'll okay. add this to our list too. Okay. No, we'll, I, we'll make sure we get you full compilations of ideas because I'm sure there are more nuanced details in there. What yeah, because they had, I gave them a copy of the plan that, um, you know, just the, the one that we put out for, um, that didn't have the specific business needs. The accessibility, accessibility on it. Yeah, so that's full of things. Our team has had that as well, so, mm -hmm. yeah. which is good. Um, but no, this is helpful because they haven't had an update on the better connections. I guess we talked about originally sending someone how many to report, but we haven't done that, so. We did, yeah, I'm happy to do a quick one if it yeah. makes sense. I know that's not in this agenda block. Specifically. Yeah, that, so. that, that, that I did your workshop that was really top notch. That was, that and so was I, really done. I did give the select board this yeah, for great. Thursday. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did put, yeah. put that out. Okay, and, so. and, and that workshop uh, on uh, May Day was tip top. Yeah, right, we yeah, had 50 tip -top. people. Yeah, it was good, give us more information. Yeah, nice. it was really good. I, I do think we want to be very careful that we use the ARPA funds for things that are one-time expenditures, and that's always a problem with additional staff. You, you, you engage staff, and then what happens when that funding runs out? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and so I would hope that whatever we're doing, <laughs> that those are one-time one-time expenditures. Yeah, yeah, not something that has to Not be something that's, going, that's you know, going into oh, the quote. Oh, budget down the road. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I mean, uh, look, there's a ton of need. I mean, there's just... Oh, I'm, I'm not... Yes, there is. <laughs> a half but, a million sounds like so much. <laughs> and it's just not. You know, I mean, it's not that... You know what I mean? You know, when you think about well, I, it. Well, I... Yes. It's so... It's <laughs> Half a million just doesn't go as far as it used to. I mean, <laughs> you need a half a billion. You need yeah. a half a billion. So then we'd have something, Ellie. At, at any rate, you know, there's, yeah. No, you're yeah. right. No. Yeah. I think there are cases, though, where, you know, if you put a position in place, part of the job can be raising funds to continue well, the position I, or leveraging I, 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 I agree with you. And uh, I've suggested before that we joined together with some other communities for a climate yeah. coordinator. Right. And the experience with those is that they have saved money yeah. uh, in the long run. Yeah. So it's, there are arguments to be made yeah. pro, pro, con, sure. all the way down the road. Anyway. We'll keep looking at it and you know, we'll uh, decide here in the late summer, early fall you know, where our best money um, is spent for our buck, you know, type deal, so.
and we appreciate everybody, you know, input and putting time into coming up with different <coughs> ideas that can better our community. So, so thank you. Well, thank you for all you do. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else on the ARPA? I don't have anything else. No. Okay. Anything left on the town manager's report? Um. No. No. Nope. I'm good. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Then we had the select board meeting minutes. We'll just go through them one by one, make it easier. So we had the uh, meeting minutes from the 25th of April, which was the normal select board meeting. Any amendments to that? Or are we good to approve it as written? Yes, Dave. Paragraph 3. Just a date change. Uh, Lenny Meek wanted to remind people that June 24th to June 2nd, oh, 2022. Sure. Thank uh, you. That was what, the 26th, I think? Yeah. 26th, I think. Yeah. Or 27th. Yeah, I'll look. Okay, 2 mm. 6 yeah, or 2 I 7. Oh, good. Yes, and I was I, typing away. I wasn't sure if, if. Is Lenny the name that he prefers to use? Oh, I don't Leonard? know. You're right. It's a, I'll put Leonard just to. I mean, I, we I call him Lenny, I, I but know, you're but right. I, I don't know. That's a good I had one. a cousin whose name was Leonard. He answers he, to both. He hated the name Lenny. Oh, that's oh, funny. Oh, and he responds to both. But yeah, yeah I'll yeah, fix them. Yeah. But I'll, I'll fix just, them. That's a, good, that's a good point. Thank you. Okay, any other changes? Move to approve as amended. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, you good with that, Gene? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, the May 2nd meeting, any changes to that, or are we good to approve it as written? Was Lindley there? No. 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 Oh, okay. I move their adoption as written. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. And we did not have a whole lot of meeting minutes in there this time around. Um, EIC um, had theirs in there. Oh, say, so he has June 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th. 23rd? Yeah, that's what he says, Pride oh. Faced Update, June 23rd, 24th, oh, okay. 25, 26th, yeah. in his minutes. So I guess I'll make mine 23rd to Yeah, 26. I thought he said 24th to the 26th. Me too, but. but that's what it says. So I guess I'll make it match there. Okay. But I'll double check their email, their post on their website. Sounds good. Any other business to come before the board before we head into executive session? And we won't be making any decisions after executive session, so. Well. Huh? Well, it might be. Doubtful. Okay. We might be. We could probably put one for another time, but. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I just need a motion to enter executive session and discuss the evaluation of the Bye, town Ellie. manager. Bye. And Thank you. Discuss uh, negotiating or securing real estate purchase of potential property on Church Street. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. 